Hi folks, this is Dina Pacwa of EmbodyTheSacred.net and I wanted to just reach out and wish everyone a happy, healthy, and safe Thanksgiving and offer this you know, time to reflect and uh, appreciate and maybe create our own gratitude lists, you know, thinking of things that have brought us some joy and happiness over this past year is always a good idea. And actually it's a great practice, you know, that we can continue even just find, finding like three to five things to appreciate every day can definitely do a lot for our outlook and positivity. Um, and at the same time, you know, honoring our feelings and not ignoring all the various challenges, you know, that our society and, and in our world, right? Um, but as my partner Keith has said, and I can say, you know, I haven't always listened, but I thought this was really good advice. He's like, you have to take it in in small bites, small pieces. Otherwise, it's just too overwhelming, right? So that being said, you know, Thanksgiving and other holidays can bring up, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of different feelings and sadness depending on our communities and depending on our individual experiences and relationships and so on. And it's also our, our responsibility here in the U.S. to really honor and look at the real history of this uh, holiday and uh, the real meaning to First Nations and Indigenous people and also our African American uh, citizens. So it's important to look at the marginalized communities, especially, you know, going back to our nation's beginnings and really honoring uh, their losses and suffering uh, due to colonization. So we can do that and still also appreciate all the good things in our lives. So those are some things we can do and also um, you know, finding out who the First Nations people were that lived on the land where you are. I always try to honor the tribes in my prayers and offer some um, donations back when I can also to support them. So there's different ways that we can, we can acknowledge the truth of this holiday. Uh, Lila June has a great video on YouTube that's, uh, where she talks about the truth of Thanksgiving and she really comes at it from, you know, her own ancestral wisdom and knowledge and just in a very compassionate and uh, truth-telling way, which I think is very powerful. So I would look for that. And, you know, for all of us who are grieving, you know, have lost loved ones, uh, maybe this year or, you know, over the last few years, and the holidays definitely brings up those losses. So a lot of folks are feeling grief. Um, it's just, a, you know, we're, the times we're in and, you know, a lot of folks have lost family members due to COVID. You know, we've lost almost 800,000 people just here in the U.S. and 5 million worldwide, which is, you know, enormous. But it's good to see that we're starting to make some headway in a better direction. So we just have to come together and do the things that really take care of ourselves and the greater community to the best of our ability. Um, yes, you know, there's certainly time for honoring our personal freedoms, and that's certainly something we shouldn't uh, ignore. But really, this virus came to teach us about taking care of each other and what we can do for not just ourselves, but for our, our family members and our extended communities. So there's always you know, room for us to do more looking at that. But for a lot of folks who are grieving and feeling losses and even changes in their relationships and communities, you know, maybe because of the polarization that's gone on in our society politically due to the pandemic and a lot of different things, right? And maybe have experienced some shifts and changes in relationships. It's great when we can have some additional tools to work with uh, to help guide us through these times, you know, one of the things that's really important is not to stifle our grief and not to stuff it down, right? A, a lot of us can do that. I've done it. You know, sometimes we just don't have time to grieve at the time, you know, we lose somebody, you know, um, there's a lot of moving parts a lot of times. So, you know, it's really our lungs, 
in uh, traditional Asian medicine where we are affected most and interesting how the COVID virus affects the lungs, right? Uh, I think in a larger sense, we're grieving a lot of things. You know, we're grieving our, our nation's history and, uh, you know, the impact of that. We're grieving wars that our ancestors fought in um, or even, you know, more recently uh, the veterans and what they've experienced. Um, so many things, right? The shifts and changes in our communities and not being able to spend as much time with people in person because of the pandemic and just changes in belief systems and maybe, you know, certain relationships and even work situations that you know, we knew weren't so great, we knew were kind of toxic, and then the pandemic really amplified uh, those unhealthy situations. And, you know, maybe we couldn't get out of them right away. So that's also a grieving process. So many things, right? So I just wanted to share a couple of tools that I've worked with that maybe you will find helpful along with, uh, you know, working with a grief counselor or therapist uh, if you have access to them. So one of the things that I do as a shamanic practitioner and as an ordained minister and energy healer is uh, I you know, work a lot with the spirit world and with my loving and compassionate ancestors, spirit guides, angels, etc. So the angel, the archangel actually, who uh, works to help our loved ones cross over at the time of death, and also that we can call on to support us in the grieving process is Archangel Azrael. Okay, so this is an angel card from the Archangel's deck. I'm not sure how it appears to you if it's flipped around, but it says hello from heaven and that our loved ones in heaven are doing fine and to let go of worries and feel their loving blessings, right? So when we're in the middle of the grieving process, it can be really hard to feel, right, the presence of our loved ones because we're just feeling that pain so much and we're missing them so much. So if we can quiet down, if we can calm ourselves down and call on our loving angels and guides and Archangel Azrael to come and give us comfort, and we can also ask for our loved ones in spirit to give us signs. And I always ask, please make it very clear and specific so that I don't miss it. And then just open yourself up. You can even say, you know, within the next week, you know, give it a time frame because in, you know, the heavenly realms, they don't have time the way that we do here. And it could be five years from now. So, you know, I always ask <laughs> as soon as possible, maybe within the next five days would be great. And then just really just open up your perception, start paying attention to uh, what's going on around you. Uh, my dad, who passed away a few years ago, he likes to communicate with his birth date. Uh, either sometimes I catch it like on the little box, the cable box clock, or it could be the stove clock. It could be, you know, my car clock. License plates often have his birth date. Uh, so he communicates with me through through numbers and also music. So if you're a big musical person, uh, a lot of us love music, right? Music is very healing. Pay attention, right? My dad used to love to go to the grocery store. So one of the places where I often get messages from him is when I, you know, go to the grocery store. Either I see it's, you know, a car with his birth date on it or I'm walking in or I'm walking around and I hear music that's, you know, very connected to him. Like he loved Frank Sinatra, he's a big Frank Sinatra fan. So uh, the song, I mean, there's a number of songs. Dean Martin also, he was a big fan. So those old time songs, when I hear them, it definitely gets my attention. So just recently I heard Fly Me to the Moon and then I, you know, listened to it on YouTube and I pulled up the lyrics and I was like, oh my God. You know, the, the teachings I've learned from some of my shamanic teachers is that, you know, when we cross over, we go to the stars or we return to the stars or our ancestors are in the stars. And so it was just, you know, pretty, pretty cool to get that message from him. And it was very comforting. So if we can open ourselves up, uh, you know, and just ask for very specific signs, it can give us some comfort even while we're missing them. Right. So. One of the other things I love to do is work with stones and crystals. I mean, right? Who doesn't? But anyway, 
<laughs> um, so some of my favorite crystals for helping us work with grief or work through grief, I would say my all-time favorite is Apache Tear Obsidian. Okay. And a lot of times it appears with like almost like a white sheen on the outside or like a white uh, coating on the outside. But it's this rough form of obsidian and it has a whole history that's really amazing. Uh, and hopefully I can put a link up for you to check that out through my friend uh, Sherry Whitfield, the keeper of the ancient Crystal Skull Synergy. And I recommend their you know, site. They have an eBay store and a store on their website where you can uh, check out the Apache tier and get the whole history. But this is like the stone for helping us work through grief. And we, you know, we don't just like leave it around, hold it, meditate with it, um, you know, cleanse it periodically, swish in a little bit of sea salted water and wash it off. But, you know, sit with it, hold it. I like to hold stones in my left hand uh, because that's the receiving side. So that's, this is just an amazing stone for grief. Rose quartz. This one looks, you know, kind of more like a white quartz, but it's usually more pink than this. Can't really see it in this video, but you can find some beautiful pink. And it's just like the stone of universal love compassion, healing. It's a great stone. It's so gentle. It's like probably one of the best stones you could give someone. So I love that stone for helping us heal our hearts, right? And then angelite, another great stone. This one, this is from Peru. It's a beautiful stone. And it's for connecting with the angels. So feeling that connection to the spirit world to these, you know, loving guides that we have, the angelic realm that can support us in our healing. Uh, so angelite's a great stone for that. Um, another favorite of mine, all-time favorite, is kyanite. And I love the blue kyanite. There's many different types of kyanite, but I love the blue. And kyanite helps to align our energies and it also helps to protect us by aligning our energy, so keeping out discordant energies from our energy field, but it helps us to align our energy, and we're going to be more receptive and open to messages from the spirit world and our guides and ancestors. And also, you know, it will keep out discordant energy from around us. So those are some stones and crystals, you know, that we can work with very gently to help us with our process. And another uh, modality that I just love, and it's also very gentle uh, for folks to work with, are flower essences. And I often say, like, flowers are so beautiful, how could they not have healing powers, right? I mean, for thousands of years, healers have worked with plants, uh, and it's there's no solid plant material. I could tell my borage has, you know, been kind of worn out here, but um, there's no solid plant material. Like, if you were taking a tincture you know, the, the extracts of the plants are in there, teas, right? So flower essences are very gentle, and they have really no contraindications. Um, some folks really don't believe how could they work, but again, it would take some having an open mind and uh, working with folks who have had experiences with them. So I've worked with flower essences for probably over 30 years, and I'm a practitioner, and I just love them. So borage is a flower for courage of the heart to help us with that heavy hearted feeling when we're grieving and going through loss. So it's a, it's a wonderful ally. The Flower Essence Society actually has a blend of flower essences and essential oils that you can work with. It's called grief relief uh, if you're really in this process, right? And what I can say, though, is it will bring the grief to the surface. So I wouldn't be pounding this down on a day when you, you know, have to be out and about with people. I would wait till it's a day where you're going to be home and you have that time to really honor your grieving process because it will bring it to the surface. Like if you throw in some sad music or a sad movie, you'll be able to bring it, bring some of that up and help yourself process it. Okay, so I hope that uh, some of these suggestions were helpful, and even at the very least, just knowing that you're not alone, that these are challenging times, but there really is hope for the future. There's so much Aquarian energy that's coming in. It's an energy of change, and, you know, the U.S., we're still in our Pluto return, so we are still seeing, 
you know, the old ways and the old patterns and they're still fighting for uh, power, right? The old ways that really no longer serve us, right? They're not for the greater good. They really only serve a select few, especially in areas of uh, white privilege. So it's time for that unity and for the, the age of the humanitarian, the age of Aquarius to really start coming to into fruition. So we're, you know, we have to think the long game, as Robert Reich has said, and, you know, try to find ways to help each other. Okay, so take care of each other, and I will talk to you soon.